Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Pokemon Stadium 2 Draft League. Got updated standings there on the left, and we got a double uh, double header today by the Houston ho -Oh, so anything could happen. Got some interesting matchups for you today, and I'll be right back with our first matchup of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. First matchup of the day, the Pokemon Power and the Houston ho -Oh. All right, let's see. Zapdos is really the only thing that's bad for Moltres here on the other team. Uh, Suicune, kind of, although we could Sky Attack it. Um, Scizor might actually have a shot of being pretty good this game. Uh... Electabuzz is solid unless Bayleaf gets out there. Blastoise is solid unless Suicune or Bayleaf get out there. Venusaur is going to have some problems. Yeah, Venusaur is probably the most disposable. Uh, let's go Moltres, and if they end up with Suicune or Zapdos... We'll switch to Venusaur to take the hit. So here we go. It is Suicune to start, as expected. I knew the game was going to start either uh, Zapdos or Suicune. All right, Venusaur. Let's see how you fare here. Right, they're likely to switch to Espeon or Zapdos. I'm a poison powder, whatever comes in. Seventy five percent accurate. Uh, Articuno is poison now. That's good. Uh, Blastoise. The Pokemon is returning to its Pokeball. Unless Blastoise gets frozen, the Blizzard shouldn't be too bad for us. Oh, it's Um, Hydro Pump. They didn't switch. It is shrouded itself in mist. What's this? Is that what good? All right, all right. A hot battle is unfolding. I'm banking, I'm kind of banking on them switching this time. I'm going to go Hydro Pump, though, since they didn't last time. Okay, good good call. Don't freeze me. Blastoise takes the hit. If we land the Hydro Pump, that Articuno is going down. All right, Blastoise takes out Articuno.
next Pokemon needs to be prepared. Bayleaf? Zapdos, okay. Uh, Venusaur, get back out here. Alright, that's why Venusaur's in there right now. Let's do Poison Powder again. They're gonna stay in, alright. Hey, we got a Thunder to miss! No Thunders missed last week! It, it does happen! <laughs> Tackle! Yeah, that hurt. What's this? A light hit. Sparks are flying from Um I'd kinda like to save the rest of Venusaur's health to deal with uh Suicune. So we're gonna put Electabuzz in. So let's see, we've seen three of Zapdos's um ten thunder already just keeping track of that <sighs> number four three for four by the way on the 70 percent accurate move light screen so thunder doesn't hurt as much when it does hit It got the paralysis. Of course it did. All right. Still, ha still has only missed once, by the way. Thunder punch. All right, that poison helping out. All right, Zapdos is going down the poison next turn. Unless they switch. That still means Zapdos is on a counter where it basically has one attack left, whether it hits or misses. All right, can we get a paralysis? That would be kind of nice. Kind of nice. Come on. Nope. All right. All right, let's get Moltres out there. What we'll do is we'll charge up Sky Attacks. If they switch, we can still we can get the charge turn out of the way. Meanwhile, if Bayleaf stays in there, there's not a whole lot other than Body Slam here that it can do. Oh, of course it gets the Paralysis first turn. Shouldn't have ever doubted that. Safeguard. Okay, so yeah, we do get the charge up for free. Now, we uh, hope that we aren't paralyzed. Alright, here comes another body slam. Alright, can we not be paralyzed? Alright. Big hit. There goes Bayleaf. That's huge, though, the way that um, ho -Oh sets up their team to get rid of the Bayleaf is big. All right, all right. It's probably Zapdos. No, it would be Suicune. Okay. Oh, do I think the Venusaur can survive two hits from the Suicune? I'm not sure it can, so I'm going to switch in Electabuzz. 
There's no Pokemon left on their team that resist Electabuzz, so if we can hit something, we're going to hit at least neutrally. Alright, so it looks like Electabuzz is going to go down. But again, if I had to trade the two, Electabuzz is paralyzed, Venusaur isn't. Plus, Venusaur can heal up with the Giga Drain. Alright, Electabuzz goes down to Suicune. All right, Venusaur. We're either gonna we're either gonna have a big Giga Drain on Suicune, or we're gonna get to hurt something else at least. They're staying in. Do we survive Gust? How much does Gust do? About half. So I'm kind of glad we went went with a uh, Electabuzz. All right, big Giga Drain. Yep. We're basically offsetting the damage it does to us while uh, winnowing it down. So if it doesn't get a critical hit here, Venusaur should win this matchup. All right. Nice job, Venusaur. We're actually gaining more HP than we're losing so far. Alright, Suicune's gonna go down this turn. Alright. Now Venusaur can't do as much in the rest of the battle. <laughs> Espeon is definitely a disadvantage for us. Uh, we might be able to take out Zapdos. But the good news is, whether this team did it intentionally or not, we have a dark type in Tyranitar that can't be hit by the Psybeam. All right. Sandstorm, so that no matter who's in, we can get some damage on them. Big whoop. Oh, it's got its quick attacks. It's going to have to tail whip several times just to do anything to us. Fight. All right, here we go. Good hit. Sandstorm's going to hit it too. I'm going to mud slap it. The sandstorm will take it out anyway. What will it do? All right, Swift. Oh, that was weird. All that, all that tail whipping, and it did 33 damage. How's that? A light hit. All right, the sandstorm should take it out. It did not take it out, but we'll get it this next turn. Oh, yeah, we definitely win this turn. I don't know why it did Psych Up. That was dumb. Yeah, you copied my defense being lesser. Weird decision-making by the computer. I don't think the computer thought it was going to survive the uh, Sandstorm either. I figured as much. Get Scizor out there. 
Because Tyranitar's uh, Sandstorm could come in handy with Zapdos. If the uh, Poisoning doesn't get it, we could Sandstorm on that one turn and essentially win that way. Also, this gets Scizor another appearance. All right, we've got our double speed up. So we're faster than Zapdos now. Good hit, good hit. Yep, there you go. <clears throat> Another sand attack, okay. We're just going to keep spamming uh, Metal Claw, though, because whenever it does hit, we'll have a chance to up our defense. That and with the mean look, we can't switch out right now anyway. We're going to be here a while. There's a hit. Good. Oh, we got our attack boost. I said defense boost earlier, didn't I? Attack boost. So now we're going to hit even harder when we do hit. This is where the scissor can get scary. Not when we have a million sand attacks, but the idea is that you... Agility wants to be faster than everything. And then if you can get one Metal Claw boost, you're scary. If you get two Metal Claw boost, you're a nightmare. So uh, that's kind of the idea. Obviously, in current Pokemon, like, close combat and um, uh, bullet punch would be better. But for Gen 2, like, this is as good as you can get, pretty much. Although I would run Slash instead of Cut. All right, Scizor takes out the Umbreon. Just, one Pokemon Just the Zapdos remains. And with us having five Pokemon left still, uh, and it being poisoned already, it's on a, ca it's on a counter. Metal Claw. Nope. Here comes the thunder. Hit, and we're paralyzed. Scizor hangs on. And the poison from Venusaur gets the knockout. And that is what we call a 5 to nothing victory for the power. All right, the power... Looking pretty good this week, getting themselves back to 5-5. Five and five. Congratulations on the win. The Ho-Oh didn't pick a bad team, but uh, once we got a couple of uh, checks and counters out of the way, there just wasn't much that, that the team could do. Plus, the computer wasn't very good in that battle. I really haven't been able to figure out the computer this year. Um, some battles, it battles like it's a mastermind, or it has... Uh, uh, there are other battles where it has just the craziest and most incredible luck in the world and then there's battles like that where it's like what was it doing so um never know what you're going to get from it but congratulations to the power back to five and five depending on how things go today the power could be i believe in third place at best i think that they're basically going to pass it really depends on what happens in ponyta and slashers they're going to be either third or fourth depending on who wins and tiebreakers and such. Uh, but consider, but if Nightmare were to lose, they'd only be a game out of first, so third place is not a bad spot. So uh, that's the end of our first match of the day. I'll be right back with our second match where the Ho-Oh 
or the home team. All right, see you in just a moment. All right, here we are for the second matchup of the day. The Houston ho -O, who are currently now 3-7 and seven after losing the first of their doubleheader. And the Nightmare after Christmas, who's 6-3. and three. This is a big one, because if the ho -O win, they're still in contention to with the 3-4-5 spots. And second, even, really. Um, and uh, the Nightmare, if they lose, that opens up the door for the other teams. If they win, they stay ahead. So, uh... Let's see how this goes. All right. Uh, Bayleaf has three Pokemon. It can't really do anything to. Kind of four if you count Snorlax. Um, so we're, we got to play it as if they're going to pick something that we're bad against, probably. Charizard's basically just here for Machamp. Maybe to burn... Snorlax. Umbreon's just here for Gengar. Suicune's here for Dugtrio and Houndoom. Espeon for Tentacruel and Gengar and Machamp, I'm assuming. Articuno doesn't have a whole lot it can do other than hit Dugtrio. Which is why I think it makes sense to start with Articuno. Because, uh... We have other things that can fight the Doug Trio. Grant, it keeps Doug Trio from using magnitude. So we'll see. Can't wait for this to be Hound Doom. Alright, that's actually pretty interesting. It will probably curse on the first turn. So I'm gonna try one blizzard, see what happens. They didn't switch. Man, what if we got a freeze on the first turn? No, of course we miss when we're the ones using something like Blizzard. I called that perfectly, and we got uh, got the short end of the stick there. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, try Blizzard again. Boy, it would have been nice if we had two of those at this point, so it'd be at half health. Uh, we might survive another one of those, depending on the damage roll. If we do survive, that's big because we're faster. Alright, Articuno, can you get one more hit to get... Snorlax down to into the red here, please. Nope. Well, we're batting about 500 there. Two for four. That's not unreasonable for Blizzard. I know the game would never miss that often, but that's honestly not unreasonable for Blizzard. So nothing to complain about too much there. If it was person versus person, that's about what you can expect from Blizzard. Uh, as opposed to when the computer is using it. So let's see here. Um, that's because I'm thinking. We could go with Umbreon and use Psych Up to copy the defensive boost from Curse. But our defense isn't very good to begin with anyway. Uh, let's go Umbreon. Because Umbreon's main thing is we brought it for Gengar, but we could beat Gengar with other things too. Sand attack to make it to headbutt could actually miss. It won't miss, but it could now. Hey, I called that. Faint attack because it didn't boot because uh, all dark moves are special. Back in Gen Two, that did absolutely nothing. Uh, 
Well, we have the one sand attack on it, so you'd think it would miss once eventually. There it is. Yeah, honestly, Snorlax might be the scariest one in this matchup just because there wasn't really anything brought that's, like, particularly great against Snorlax. Like, Articuno could have beat it if it went 4 for 4 on Blizzard. That also means we would have had to be lucky enough to go 4 for 4 on Blizzard. All right, you got 103. Um... If we go Bayleaf, they're going to switch into Tentacruel or Gengar. If we go Espeon, they're going to switch into Houndoom. So we got to go Charizard or Suicune. I'm going to try Charizard. Alright, Fire Punch. If we don't knock it out, maybe we at least burn it and cut its attack. We got the burn. Okay, so Snorlax is going down after this turn. Please miss. All right, well, at least the burn protected Charizard a little bit there. All right. That was the largest threat. There's still a lot of big threats on this team, but that was the most monumental one. And you're probably the second most. <laughs> um, you're probably going to go with water attack here. Let's see what's left. Suicune would be great for Houndoom and Dugtrio. Mm. Gotta decide basically who's worth uh, taking more damage. You know what? I'm gonna throw Bayleaf out there. Because um, Bayleaf can't do as much in this battle as it normally does. Basically, it'd be, it would be trying to take on um, Doug Trio. That's about it. So, while we would normally try to preserve Bayleaf as much as possible, it makes sense to have it out there right now. That, Hey, maybe we can get lucky and he'll paralyze the Tentacruel with a um, Body Slam. Can we survive a Sludge Bomb to get that chance? We did. Can we get lucky enough to get that chance? We got the Paralysis. That is huge because Tentacruel is uh, a lot faster than most people would give it credit for. We're going to try the synthesis and hope that it gets paralyzed. Oh, they're going to switch. Even better. Even better. Free healing. That is huge for later, though, that it's been slowed down. All right, Gengar's basically just going to try to hypnosis us. You know what? We're going to stay in because in this game they have, um, I don't really like the rule, but they have the uh, sleep clause. So if it does put us to sleep, we can just put in um, Espeon for free. All right, more healing. We'll do it one more time because it'll probably nightshade again. That way we'll either be at full health or close to full health. And we're making it use up some of its Nightshade. Though I think it gets to use Nightshade like 15, 20 times, something like that. Alright, full health. Um, if I throw Espeon in there, it gets hit by the Nightshade. And then the next turn they probably switch to Houndoom. 
another werewolf. I think actually I need to stick with Bayleaf. It doesn't sound like the greatest idea in the world, but the Gengar can't heal itself. So I think that's just what we do. I would say just try to get a little bit of damage on it for the uh, the next Pokemon. But yeah, right now, if we can manage to get by Gengar, we have stuff that can uh, beat the other Pokemon. So it's a matter of getting by Gengar and also kind of dancing around Houndoom because uh, Espeon can't do a whole lot to Houndoom. So really the key would be if we could get rid of Houndoom, we, we can kind of steamroll the rest of this with Espeon and uh, Suicune and Charizard. But that's if we can get to that point. All right, we're going to use synthesis here. It restored its HP. All right, we'll get we'll get off one more razor leaf, and then it'll take out bay leaf. All right, all right. Good job, though, Bayleaf. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get the game to uh, call my bluff here. I'm going to have SP on, but I'm going to switch immediately to Suicune, uh, hoping that they switch to... Hound Doom since Espeon's out there. I'm gonna have to outsmart the game to have a chance to win this. They are switching. If it's Hound Doom, that'd be amazing. I also think the game may switch to Tentacruel here. But I'm going to do one bubble beam to see what happens first. They stayed in. If we don't get flinched, we got a chance to do some damage. Oh, okay. I see, game. We didn't get a single flinch last week when I used Bite on Houndoom, but you get it first try, huh? How many times did I use it last week? It's like four or five. And we didn't get a single flinch. Two in a row. So let me get this straight. The previous week, the computer got four flinches in a row. Uh, this week, it might have been three flinches in a row. Either way. Then last week, I got no flinches. And now we're back to the computer getting nothing but flinches again, huh? Sounds real fair and balanced. <laughs> There we go. The game let us play. Got a crit. Oh, really? Really? Eight health? If we get rid of Houndoom, Espeon runs amok on the rest of this team. Don't flinch, Suicune, please. All right, Houndoom's gone, and that opens up a, wi a window of opportunity. It doesn't mean it will work out that way, but there's a window open now. The next Pokemon needs to be prepared. Oh, it's my chance. I was, I was going to say three of the four remaining Pokemon are weak to, uh, to uh, Espeon. All right, let's get a bubble beam off. All right, Machamp takes out Suicune. All 
All right, Espeon, here we go. Doug Trio's the uh, wild card right now. If we can manage to get to get rid of the three weak to Espeon, then we have Charizard to fight Doug Trio with where it can't use Magnitude. Psybeam. I'd feel safer if we had Psychic, but Psybeam will have to do. Machamp hangs on. Please miss. Submission 80% accurate. Of course they get it to hit. Of course they did. Swift. Surely we can do nine damage. All right, Tentacruel and Gengar are both weak to Psychic. And then there's Dugtrio. If Dugtrio comes out, we switch in Charizard. Yep, there we go. This will force Doug Trio to have to use Slash. And we'll play it safe and go Wing Attack so that they switch Tentacruel in. We're still getting as much damage on it as we can. Going with Curse. Okay, okay. Well, in that case, we're going Fire Punch so that we can maybe burn you. Get rid of that boosted attack. Also, because uh, Fire Punch is a special attack back in Gen 2. Alright, even with the boost, Slash, uh, unless they get a critical hit, shouldn't take us out this turn. Fire Punch again. Mm. Burn, burn would have knocked it out. Hey, remember how I said if they don't get a critical hit? I think the game heard me. Well, the only good news is that um, with that curse, I think that uh, Espeon might outspeed Doug Trio now. We'll find out soon enough. Yep, we outspeed it now. Well, at the very least, this one's going to come down to the end. I don't know if we can pull this one out. We're going to need some help, like a full paralysis or confusion or something. Because I don't think... Again, if we were working with Psychic, it'd be different. With Psybeam, I think it survives this hit. Oh, we got the confusion, though. Paralyzed and confused. Come on. Thank you. I was going to say, with paralysis and confusion, something has to go our way there. All right, so Tentacruel is going to go down. So it's going to come down to Espeon versus Gengar. Gengar's faster, but Nightshade won't take us out in one hit. So it's going to come down to does it go for Hypnosis and does Psybeam do enough damage where it's at right now to take it out. Okay, it is going straight for Nightshades. It's going to come down to is Psybeam strong enough? If it's not, Gengar wins by being faster. And Espeon... Completes the comeback. The Houston ho -O have upset the number one nightmare after Christmas. Four knockouts for Espeon. Whew. That one, uh, that, that one was tough. <laughs> that, that took a lot of game planning right there. Uh, I had to really work my way through that one uh, on my thought process. Uh, but congratulations to the Houston ho -Oh. They went 1-1 one and one in their doubleheader today. 4-7 and seven isn't too far behind the pack, so congratulations there. Uh, hanging in there. And uh, unfortunate for Nightmare After Christmas, but again, depending on what happens in the next match, Nightmare After Christmas should be unscathed. Um, but we'll see. We got one more... One more battle tonight, and uh, we'll see where things are after that. See you in just a moment. 
Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to our last matchup of the night. Night, day, you know what I mean. We got My Little Pony Ta and the West Virginia Slashers. Slashers going mostly with speed this time around. All right, let's see. I had directions to start with Staryu, so we'll be starting with Staryu. This one's going to be bittersweet, because if I win, it's my first undefeated day against the computer for a while, but it means my team loses. <laughs> and if I lose, the computer gets uh, squeaks away another win, but my team wins. So, like, it's going to be bittersweet either way in this one. Mischievous to start. Well, we don't want Star You in there, then, because of Thunder. Uh, Blissey could take a Thunder. And it would actually force Mischievous to continue to use Thunder, because Shadow Ball won't work on Blissey. First Blissey sighting for a while, I just realized. Uh, Blissey hasn't been used much this season. Of course the computer gets the paralysis on the first try. It not only lands Thunder, but it gets the paralysis. Um, you know, on the off chance they switch or we do survive Mischievous, I'm going to do one defense curl. Or if they switch. I would imagine it's like Dodrio or, or Steelix. I was going to say nothing else made sense. Well, we need to switch too then because Thunder is basically our only attacking move. We can't do anything to Steelix. Egg Bomb doesn't hurt it, and Thunder doesn't hurt it. <laughs> uh, you're, let's see. It could go for Mud Slap or Iron Tail. Uh, you know what? Let's switch back in Star You. We'll switch back in Star You and try Hydro Pump. We don't, all, all six of our Pokemon get hurt by sandstorms. So there's nothing I can really do about that. All right. Hydro Pump, whatever's out there. They left the Steelix in. Game, what are you doing? Like I said, Game, what are you doing? All right. Staryu takes out the Steelix. All right, back to this again, huh? All right, back to Blissey. This Pokemon is switching up. This Pokemon is back for another go. What will it do? And that's why Blissey's in there. The Sandstorm did more damage than the Thunder. Alright, Thunder. It's going to be Diglett now, isn't it? I should have gone Defense Curl again. Diglett's scary because, again, Fissure can hit all of our stuff. We don't have any flying Pokemon on the team today. Well, if we are going to potentially lose something to Fissure, we don't want it to be Blissey because Blissey is needed against the Mischievous. Uh, Haunter's important, so we don't want to lose it. Hitmonlee doesn't provide a whole lot, especially since Houndour could also take out Sneasel. All right, Hitmonlee's the throwaway of what's out there. Because Houndour could potentially take down Sneasel still. Um, Jinx takes out Crobat. It went for Earthquake instead of Fissure. Okay, even better. Because we should survive. Wow, Hitmonlee, you did not take that hit well either. You're actually going to get two shot by 
Diglett's Earthquake. Why switch? You already saw the Earthquake does enough! What are you doing, game? Oh, I guess Mischievous. Ah, oh, this is getting annoying. Well, on the bright side, missing high jump kick doesn't hurt as much in Gen 2. Actually, it didn't hurt at all in that case, apparently. Ah, oh, back to Blissey. And this time I'll pick Egg Bomb or Defense Curl. I guess Egg Bomb. Because if I do Defense Curl, then Fissure could still take us out. All right, free switch in. I'm going to do Egg Bomb. I didn't do Egg Bomb, did I? I don't think I did Egg Bomb. I was trying to hit the button for Egg Bomb. Well, I was right about Diglett coming back out at least. That doesn't help against Fissure. Fissure's accuracy is 30%. It can't be heightened. It can't be lowered. That does help against, like, Earthquake, though. All right, Egg Bomb. There is that Earthquake. It still hit. We're at 14. That, wow. <laughs> that, wow. Diglett took that hit. All right. Well, shoot. Uh, Diglett with a knockout. I guess we'll have to rely on Haunter for dealing with Mischievous. I think Haunter's faster than Diglett. I'm not sure. Oh. That's risky if I did that. Well, on one hand, I'm very proud of myself for picking the team I picked. Like, the team I picked. <laughs> on the other hand, I'm a little mad at myself because it's a hard team to play around with what I got here. Um, let's go Haunter. We'll try Giga Drain. If the game's smart, it'll switch into Crobat or Dodrio, which is why I'm still going to do Giga Drain because Shadow Ball wouldn't hurt Dodrio. They didn't switch, but Diglett is faster, which is a... Surprise to me. Oh my gosh, it got the it got the one shot. I couldn't tell. Someone let me know in the comments below. I couldn't tell if that was a critical hit or not. If not, wow. Okay. Haunter's pretty fast too, so that uh worries me. I believe our fastest remaining Pokemon is Jinx. If Jinx can't outspeed Diglett, this could really be a problem. It did. Oh my goodness, Diglett. <laughs> Yikes. It hasn't even used Fissure and it's killing a, this team. All right, Diglett's gone finally. My goodness. I mean, on one hand, I'm happy that Diglett performed well, but holy cow, like, it outsped everything. If it was Doug Trio, I wouldn't have been surprised. Oh, great. We got to deal with Sneasel. Um, oh, but it's faster. Well, okay, yeah, Houndour. All right, please tell me you picked your dark move or your ice move. And if it is the ice move, don't freeze us. No, I went for Slash. That's bad. All right, Houndour, you better take it out in one hit because we're in trouble if you don't. Critical hit. All right. I can't control the fact that it was a critical hit. Hitmon Lee. This is where the speed of the slashers is creating a problem. Uh, reversal, because it's more guaranteed to hit if we get to attack. 
It's gonna be mischievous again, isn't it? The Pokemon appears with a cry. Ah! <laughs> How's that? Whoop, that attack's no good. Oh, I'm gonna have to just let I'm gonna have to let Hitmon Lee go down. Cause Staryu's gonna get obliterated by Thunder and Jinx is already damaged. Yeah, I know. The have been We're going to have to go Ice Punch, because if I go Confusion, it could uh, switch to Sneasel and not do any damage. Be nice to get a Freeze here. Isn't it funny that the computer always gets a Freeze with Ice Punch, and I never seem to? Alright, Jinx goes down. Alright, the good news is, Staryu is faster than Mischievous. So the fact that it's damaged some, Staryu can take it out. Problem is that Staryu is slower than all of the other remaining Pokemon. Hydro Pump and hope for the best! Alright, Staryu takes out Mischievous. All right, but Crobat, Sneasel, and Dodrio, I believe all three outspeed Staryu, so, uh, yeah, we're going to have to hope for misses or something or critical hits on our end. There's Dodrio. Thunder and hope for the best! So remember how I was just talking about how the computer always gets freezes? I also want to lay down some knowledge here. I can't remember if it's 20% or 30%. I believe it's 20. That the elemental punches have a 20% chance of doing what they do. So either, you know, paralysis for thunder punch, burn for fire punch, freeze for ice punch. Try attack has a 10% chance of getting a status effect. Game gets it first try. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with when we play this. Well, that should be a uh, victory for the Slashers, then. Unfortunate. Unfortunate luck there. Man, I thought this was finally going to be the week where I go to 3-0 and on the season against the computer. Crobat didn't even play. All right, well, with that, uh, I'm disappointed that I lost to the computer, but the computer did get my slashers a win, so like I said, bittersweet. But man, I haven't had a 3-0 and against the computer yet this season. That was my chance, and it, the game pulled out all the stops with su stuff such as the, the freeze, etc. All right, well, I will be right back with the updated standings, and we'll see where things are playing out now. All right, everybody, we're back with the standings and everything. Uh, boy, things have gotten interesting now. Um, do want to point out, by my surprise, the Slashers on a four-game win streak. Um, no idea how that happened, but all right. Um, surely that's not going to last. Um, the standings right now, um, very, very even. Nightmare After Christmas hanging on to first place by half a game with the Slashers right behind. Pokemon Power at 5-5. Five and five. They move up to number 3 now via tiebreaker by point differential. Ponyta sitting in the, at the 4 seed at 5-5. Five and five. And the Houston Ho-Oh at 4-7. and seven, Not far behind. Only a game behind pa the Power and Ponyta. So, uh, things getting interesting. Uh, let's look at some stats now. For the Power, uh, still going to say Moltres is the best performer so far this season. Venusaur helped out a lot today with its defensive capabilities. 
Um, and we even got to see uh, Scizor do something today. Blastoise has been good when it's shown up. Five knockouts, one faint. Uh, Slashers. Uh, used a lot of the lower Pokemon as far as games played today. Mischievous now up to 9-4. Um, Diglett, of all things, up to 6-3 now. Um, yeah, just a nice even mix there amongst that team. So uh, things looking pretty good for the Slashers. My Little Ponyta. Uh, Jinx still with a pretty good ratio. Haunter with a pretty good ratio. Um, just unfortunate today. This is one of those situations where... Um, the matchup kind of determined it as opposed to um, skill. Um, I don't think they were bad selections, the Pokemon. But what I mean by matchup is that it was a 50-50 matchup, kind of like a coin flip. And then when the game got some lucky breaks, that was enough to sway it in its favor. Um, Nightmare After Christmas, still no Alakazam sighting. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose now to mess with me or if he's uh, planning on using it against my team in the future. But um, uh, they were in a surprise upset today. It looked like they are going to win, and then Espeon went on an absolute tear at the end to save the day for the Ho-Oh. Tentacruel still with almost a 2-to-1 ratio, still the front runner for MVP. Uh, Machamp does have a 2-to-1 ratio, so it's also doing very well. Um... We go to the Houston Ho-Ho, who had a doubleheader today. They lost to the power, but then upset the number one team. Bayleaf continues to be the most play, the most used Pokemon. But Espeon putting them some great work today. It's now the front runner on this team as far as production goes. And uh, Charizard played a key role, burning the Snorlax and also um, getting some good damage in on the Doug Trio there late. And kind of forcing Doug Trio to go cursed, to be honest. So, uh, pretty good job there. Let's see what next week looks like. We have the Slashers will be at home against the Nightmare. And the first part of the Nightmare's doubleheader. And the Nightmare will also be at home against the Power. And then we will also have uh, My Little Ponyta at home against the Houston ho -Oh. So that's how things break down for this next week. Uh, things are getting interesting. Like I said, very close on the standings here. Uh, first place and last place, only two and a half games apart. And even if you take last place out of the equation, one through four are a game or less apart. So, uh, going to be interesting to see how this goes the rest of the season. Um, but for right now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that YouTube nonsense. And I'll see you next time with another episode of the Pokemon Stadium 2 Draft League. All right. Bye-bye.